I've always wondered why is it that there are certain demographic groups that vote so much the same? There is no bigger group on that than African Americans. To talk to me about that, Derek Williams from Tell Me the Name of the Group, because I remember you from a different group. The new group is the American Conservatives of Color. New Conservatives of Color. American. American. Conservatives of Color. But not the colored New American Conservatives. <laughs> well, technically, we're all colored. With the exception this. of, yeah, you're... Italian is the right color. Just enough of this, just an, You think about it later. I'm smart enough not to go down that yeah, road. That's a good idea. Hey, talk to me a little bit about this, because sure. it's always been a, a fascination of mine. When you look at how different demographics vote, mm -hmm. African Americans vote as a block more so than any racial demographic, usually in the high 90 percent for the Democrat. And, and, and the question is how many African Americans come out to vote? In 2008, a lot did comparatively, mm -hmm. but still it's at the same number, 96 and sometimes 98 percent. Go down that list, Asians seem to vote as a block in about 80 mm percent, -hmm. but for Republicans, not for Democrats. And then go down again to the to, to yeah. what is the largest growing demographic Latinos. is Latinos. Latinos are about 65 percent to 70 percent vote for Democrats. So what is it? What is it that locks the African American community and many people in politics mm -hmm. either take it for granted or some on the right to say, write it off. You're never gonna you're never gonna make any inroads. You know, so you get from four percent of the vote to five percent of the vote. Don't What's don't the do point? it. Help me understand that. Why, why such a strong lock vote? I think your, your second point, let's handle that, the second point first, because that's the more important, um, that the Republican Party, the conservatives have fundamentally said, what's the point? Why invest the resources? Why invest the energy to get votes that we can't get? Uh, and for 50 years that's been going on, and how's that working out for you? So what our group is doing is we are trying to develop and execute two messages. Message number one to the black and the brown community that says, look, we gotta change the way we do business. Message number two to the Republican conservative community that says, look, we gotta change the way we do business. Now, in terms of the black population, more so than the brown, but the black and the brown population, what we, African Americans, have done is we've basically said to the Democrat party, we're voting for you. We're voting for you. Doesn't matter, nothing matters. Doesn't matter who you are, where you are, what you stand for. You could have been busted in a hotel room with crack cocaine and hookers. And as long you as you say, manage you to that get... Like, like it's a bad thing. It sounds, it sounds, it yeah. sounds like a true story. Yeah. Yeah. But if you get out and manage to get your name on the ballot, so long as there's a D after your last name, we're voting for you. Now, historically, that wasn't the case. No. After the Civil War, if you were African American, you voted, you voted R. Republican. When did it change and why did it change? Uh, Johnson, uh, great society, entitlement society, all of a sudden the government came along and said, you know what, we will begin putting that chicken in the pot for you. We will begin giving you additional benefits. We will begin making sure that you have a level playing field. And to some degree, some of that's necessary. I'm not saying that's all a bad thing. But what happened was, all of a sudden you have public housing. You have public assistance in the form of food stamps. It's a lot easier to get Paul's vote if you can rob Peter to pay for it. So you had a generation that said the Democrats are the ones that are giving us the things we need to, sub to survive. Now, four generations later, it seeped so deeply into our culture that whether that's true or not is no longer a matter of question. Now the matter of question is how do we break the cycle? All right, I tell you what, let's, let's, you put it in two different ways. One message to African Americans about, mm -hmm. you know, we're losing our power. I think what you're saying is we're losing our power if we're taken for granted, but also to Republicans and conservatives that you're missing the boat. Uh, let's go there, right. let's go there first. What's the message to, to Republicans? You look at whether it was McCain, you look mm -hmm. at Romney, you know, so you get 4% of, uh, uh, of, of the African American vote. Let me be really cruel about this. Uh -huh. As a percentage of the population, that's not nearly as important as changing the demographic of Latino voters. You, that uh -huh. is the growing demographic. African Americans n are not as, uh, it's not growing at the same speed. No, what, no. But mes message to conservatives, what do, what do they need to know? What here's do they need what to do Here's what you're missing. Um, and you're absolutely right, it hasn't been up until this point. But what you have with the black population, if you have an urban-centric vote, you have an electorate that tends to live in the cities. And where we are in the country now is that if you can win the majority of cities that are home to an NFL franchise, you can win the election. This last election, the popular vote was basically 50-50, basically. 
But Mitt Romney only got 206 of the necessary 270 electoral college votes because they keep winning all the states that nobody lives in. I mean, it, it's great to win Nebraska and Idaho and Wyoming and South Dakota, but nobody lives there. And all of a sudden, you've got Florida with three NFL franchises, New York with three NFL franchises, California with two NFL. You can go right through the list and find them. Minneapolis, Chicago, Denver, Detroit, every place where you have concentrated urban centers, you have three things. Black people, brown people, and NFL franchise. So the, so the, the Republican Party has to wake up to the fact that the demographic face of America is changing. The demographic face of the Democrat Party is changing with it. The demographic face of the Republican Party is not. How do you mean that, is not? It is not. You and I were at a meeting Monday morning here in Denver, gatherings of various uh, heads of state, if you will, of the Republican Party, people who are involved in this, that, and the other, activists, 80 of us in that room. Had I not been there with the manager of our, the president of our Denver chapter, that would have been a completely homogenous meeting. Well, that's, there what, was we, no that's, what, there. that's what we shoot for, but you got in anyway. <laughs> but that's yeah. the answer to your well, question. Exactly. So, but, but, so it's a matter of message. Well, hang on a second. So are you saying that conservatives need to have something that they fundamentally disagree with, which is affirmative action, saying, wait a second, we need, no. we need to make sure that different groups are, are here based on skin color. Isn't that an anathema to, to what conservatives believe? Well, you said two different things. You said affirmative action which I do not believe the Republicans need to introduce, but then you said we need to have people here of different colors, which they do need to have, because it would become impossible for the Republican Party to win a general election if we don't diversify the Republican base. Plus, you want to represent all of the community, all of the society, not just the people who have light skin. So what the Republican Party needs to begin doing is developing message and intentionally outreaching to black and brown voters and giving reason. No one's going to start voting Republican just because we think you should. There has to be a message. But we, we think that's the way it's going to work. Yeah. That, yeah. Well, that how, go, and for the last 50, 60 years, how's that been working? But we're never going to outbid the left when it comes to entitlements. We're never going to outbid the left when it comes to what we can provide for, from government mm -hmm. uh, to, to attract any demographic. But we can message the truth of conservatism, which is those chains, those entitlements, that welfare, is keeping you and your community where you are. Inner city Chicago, where I was born, you go through the, there's a fantastic video that I hope you'll watch and, and we'll talk about it later called Exodus Inner City. You can find it on YouTube. Guy goes down with a handheld camera to inner city Chicago and starts asking people, how's the Democrat thing working down here? And they all say the same thing, it's not working at all. But we have no Republicans. This neighborhood's looked like this for 40 years, busted out windows, no jobs, this has been a mess for 40 years. They can't blame the Republicans down here. We don't have any of those. Well, shame on the Republican Party. Let's watch it the other way. I would imagine it has got to be tough to be a black man and a conservative. It mm -hmm. seems to me, and again, I wouldn't know, but it seems to me that there is well, a one ton. one two ain't bad. <laughs> it seems to me that there's a lot of social pressure. There's a lot of community pressure. To, to, mm -hmm. to stay in the team. I mean, I, th I think about, you know, uh, people I you look, talk to, Walter Williams. <laughs> you, mm -hmm. you, you, it's not easy being conservative and being black. Why is that? It's the, it's the crabs in a bucket mentality. And, you, and you've heard this, this analogy where if one crab tries to climb out, the other ones will grab and pull them back in. It, it's tribalism, concept known as tribalism. If you haven't seen Runaway Slave, you, you should. Runaway Slave is tremendous. But they talk about tribalism where we as the tribe being, this is, this is slave days. We as the slaves, Louisiana, Mississippi, wherever, on this plantation, we need to stick together. And we need to do those things we need to do as a group. There needs to be camaraderie. It's almost like a, like a unionization of a, of a factory. And when one person is not a part of the tribe, when one person is not a part of the team, when one person is perceived to be doing as much for the slave owner, for the master, as for the team, that person needs to be ostracized. That person needs to be put back in line. That person needs to be told, you are not one of us if you aren't with us. Even though they may be doing things that are beneficial so, to the tribe. Are you saying there's an evolutionary reason for this, basically, that we, we stick together or, or, and swim or we all sink, that we mm -hmm. need everybody together? It's all absolutely. for one. A absolutely. Now, we've reached the point, we've evolved as a society to the point where that's no longer true. Because as you mentioned earlier in the segment, what we've done as an elector is we've neutered ourselves. We've reached the point where we have two political parties, one political party 
ignores us. We're going to, to go from 3% to 4%, what's the point? We have one political party that could ignore us. We're going to get 90% no matter what. We'd be better off if 30, 40, 50% of us were voting Republican because that would force both parties to earn our votes. I, I, I see this in particularly local government all the time. And you, know, you can see it at the state house. It's those people mm -hmm. in the middle that sway the power. You're on a school mm -hmm. board and you've got two people this direction and two people in that direction and the person who could go either way gets whatever they want because both sides need that person. That, Precisely. politically speaking, that's way, the way to do it. Alright, tell me about the challenge then. How do you convince African Americans that it's okay to at least talk to the other side? How do you convince Republicans it's okay, and I've got to be honest about this, I think there's a lot of conservatives that don't want to walk in the neighborhoods where they feel uncomfortable. They don't, it is a different culture, they don't know how to handle it, they mm -hmm. don't feel comfortable in it. And you they're, not, not, they're not willing. They're not willing to cross into that neighborhood and talk. So you, you got, you got two people that don't want you to, to get you're, together. You couldn't be more right. But you know what? You were not elected to office to be comfortable. You were elected to office to represent. So there's two things that you mentioned, and both of these things have to happen. The Republican Party has got to change the way it does business. Every single elected Republican official in the country should be a member and a regularly attending member of their local chapter of the NAACP local chapter of the Urban League, of the Hispanic Chamber, of the African American Chamber, whatever, and be showing up. Because first we have to develop relationship. Then you talk politics. A handful of white faces coming around the hood once every four years saying, we care about you too, <laughs> isn't getting it done. So the Republican conservatives have to begin getting uncomfortable and go, it's no less comfortable for them to go into those neighborhoods than it is for the people in those neighborhoods to come to a town hall meeting That's an at Cherry statement. Hills Country Club. That is an amazing statement. And, and it is uncomfortable. It's extremely uncomfortable. Going around all these white people, I don't recognize, I don't know anything what's going on up here. It, it, it works both ways. And so the Republicans, have, the Republicans and conservatives, and I'm mixing those terms, but have got to begin going into the neighborhoods and giving people a reason to at least consider the platform. Go the other direction. What's the message to African Americans? The message to African Americans how, how is... How do you get them to go to places they're uncomfortable? That's much more difficult. Really? I would think it would be easier. No, it's... Well, it depends upon... The, if you're in a city, Denver, Chicago, Atlanta, yeah. that type of thing, it's going to be much more difficult because you tend to have a more urban-centric, concentrated group of people. Uh, oftentimes that move around on public transportation. In Chicago, everybody, well, I'll take the bus. Bus is how you get around. So taking the bus out to a Republican meeting in the Burbs isn't going to happen. You've got to bring the meeting and the burbs down into the neighborhood. And that has to happen on the ground. That's boots on the ground. But the message to the black voters, to the black American voters, is look, we have essentially neutered ourselves by being so predictable. People want to get more information about your organization, want to get to learn a little bit more about you. Where, where do they go? Blackandconservative.com blackandconservative.com. I bet that makes you a popular guy. Loves me. Uh, loves, loves me. me. <laughs> loves me. They all loves me. Uh, no, you know, you'd, you'd be surprised. The, and Facebook page. You have a Facebook page as Facebook. well. Facebook.com slash RMBTP. Okay. And Tuesday night, I'm giving this presentation at the Loveland 912 Project. Appreciate it. Thank you so much, Derek. Thank you. Listen for me on KHOW Radio. Tell a friend. We'll see you next week.